Okay, today I'm going to talk about the J72 auto brake, auto parking brake, I guess it's called. I sort of got like it's electric over hydraulic parking brake. Uh, <clears throat> of course, I'm underneath the RV, and this is the rear of the transmission. And you'll see this great big cast iron device. I think it weighs 40, 50 pounds, something like that. It's bolted, all this is stationary, it's bolted to the back of the transmission. This part here rotates as soon as you put it in, in gear. But sort of how this works, the way I understand it, you know, there's there's a big giant spring in here, and there's a spinning disc. And whenever when you if you don't have hydraulic pressure, then the spring overrides and by default locks that disc. So it's automatic. The drive shaft is always locked. You're not going anywhere until you have 1,400 psi applied to this hose, which releases the, the spring pressure and allows you to drive on down the road. Because <clears throat> you can see this hose here runs up to a metal line and it runs along the frame rail up to the front of the RV which I'll show you next. Okay, now we're back up top and I want to talk about how this system works a little bit, the best that I understand it anyways. Um, of course, I was on the RV, that was the auto park, the auto brake, uh, the big, big heavy piece underneath. Uh, up here we have, of course, our electric motor that builds up the pressure, builds us up 1400 PSI. You got your reservoir where it dumps back into when it's not, not, not needed. Then underneath all this stuff there's a little ECU uh, electronic control module that has the brains to all this stuff. Um, so with the original configuration, because you see a bunch of wires and stuff, because I'm upgrading it to uh, uh, a little bit better design. The original configuration earlier today before I got into this, this was sitting in place of this little valve here. This is called a transducer. With this, it has three wires on it. And with my understanding what it does, it talks to the ECU. So you got two wires, well you got three wires. But one of the wires, it, uh, it looks for PSI, like 1200 PSI or below. The other one is looking for 1400 PSI. So when you turn on the key and you take it out of park into drive, then the ECU talks to the tr uh, transducer and says, okay, how much PSI do we have in the lines? And it's going to say, well, we have less than 1,200. So, so then one wire is telling the ECU we have less than 1,200. So then, then the ECU tells the electric motor to come on. So then the electric motor comes on builds up pressure, the pressure goes out the line, goes this blue, out this blue line, goes down the frame rail to the auto part brake. So it's pumping 1200 PSI down there. Once it, once it gets satisfied and builds up, I said 1200, it, it, once it builds up to 1400 PSI, it's satisfied, then the, the, the transducer sends another signal to the ECU. So, okay, I see 1400 PSI, so now you can turn off the motor. So now the motor's turned off. Okay, at this point, the brake is released and you can drive away. Now the problem with this design that can get people in trouble sometimes is this piece right here. This is called a proportioning valve solenoid and it requires 12 volts to operate. Actually, you know, for you to drive down the road, 12 volt signal has to be applied to this coil at all times. That holds and maintains that 1400 PSI in the blue line. If for whatever reason you drive down the road and you lose 12 volts to this, if a wire gets goes gets rubbed in two, or if you blow a fuse, or if the little ECU underneath this thing just decides to freak out and go bad while you're driving down the interstate at 60 miles an hour, then your brakes will instantly be applied. And if you're on a three lane interstate stuck in the middle, well there you are, sitting there until someone comes along with a tow truck, unhooks your drive shaft, and gets you out in the middle of the interstate. So you can just imagine what a nightmare that could be. Or in you know, another scenario, if, if your battery system, you, if, you, if you lost all 12 volts to battery system, if the battery freaked out for some way, or if the battery uh, hold down uh, came loose and you had a major short and lost all 12 volts instantly, the same thing would happen. You'd be just sitting there in the middle of the interstate. So, that's what makes the original design somewhat problematic. And uh, that's what I've been doing today is installing this 
device here, but been made by uh, uh, RazzlesRV.com. It's called the Ultra, Ultra Stop. And I've put that on, done tested it, it works great. And uh, the way you understand how, how it works, um, of course, you remove this proportioning valve, not the proportioning valve, the transducer. You remove it and replace it with a, a, another valve. And uh, it's just a little bit simpler because inside this box is just some, uh, it's some simple relays and not a whole lot of computer stuff that can go bad and give you trouble. So it's kind of the same way. It, you know, if, if you drop, drop like to 1200 PSI, it tells this electric motor to kick on. Once it gets up to 13, 1400 PSI, it tells the electric motor to turn off. Okay, so that's, that's pretty simple. And then, of course, also it's sending that pressure out the blue line, which goes down the frame rail and, and releases the brake. And we still use uh, the uh, proportioning valve is still in play. But the key thing to this design is now there's another valve that's added. So for the original design, this blue line comes out and goes down, down here behind the pump. That there it is. You see that right here. The original design, that blue line connects right here to that metal line. That metal line goes right down the frame rail into the auto brake on the drive shaft. Now with this update, um, I've removed that blue line from the metal line, the, the blue hydraulic flexible line from the metal line, and, and moved it up here to this new uh, solenoid uh, check valve that uh, that Razzles has come up with. And uh, that's the key thing that makes this much a much better system. Because this is a it's a solenoid valve, but it's also a one-way check valve. So now instead of the fluid pumping 12 1400 PSI straight down the straight from the blue line right down the frame rail to the auto auto park, it what it does now it goes up, it goes through this check valve, goes through this black line that I've since added. Let me zoom back a little bit here. I hit my hit a button. And, and now it goes to this check valve through the black line. And then the black line is, is connected where the blue line used, used to connect down at the bottom. And because this has a, a check valve in it, also a solenoid that can release it, now if you're going down the road and something happens catastrophic, you lose voltage on the proportioning valve, this check valve will not allow pressure to bleed off. So even though this could lose 12 volts due to a battery short or bad wire, anything, because this allows fluid to flow in but will not automatically flow back out, it's got a check valve built into it. It will hold and maintain that 1400 PSI uh, holding the, the spring back, allowing you to drive on down the road. Uh, so the way it releases, it actually requires 12 volts before it will release. So once you put it in the park, it sends a signal to their new box with a simple relay and it tells it, okay, it's, it's okay to release. So this solenoid will engage and allow the, the fluid to bleed back into the reservoir. Then you can, uh, you'll be okay to, it'll automatically uh, go into, into park then. So a lot better system, I believe. I done hooked it all up, works great. I've, I went out here on the hill and tested it. Uh, it, it. It holds great. You know, put it in neutral, pull the emergency brake, it, it holds it. Um, a few things I wanted to talk about what I ran into as far as getting this installed. A few tips if you want to do this yourself. If you're, if you're mechanically minded, it's no problem at all. Uh, first of all, it takes a 9 16 line wrench. You'll need an, a regular open in 9 16 You'll need a half inch wrench and a three quarter wrench. Uh, of course, you can use your line wrench on here to break this uh, line loose first. Then we'll take a get you a socket. I got me a six point socket. Put it on the fitting because the fitting will remain in, in this aluminum block. Then use an extension so you can get up high with a ratchet and get that fitting loose. Once you get the line off and the fitting off, you'll have room to get a wrench in here to get the original transducer loose. So get your three quarter wrench on there and uns unscrew that. Now one trick because there's not much room to work. You can see, you get your wrench in here, it's hard to get any leverage. So what I did, I took me a, I left my wrench laying on there, and at the same time, I got me a little piece of pipe and wedged it in here and, and pushed on it. So it, it broke it loose, it was kind of snug. But you have to sometimes get a little creative. Each coach may be a little bit different uh, to, to get that loose. Oh, another tip, 
before you start breaking these lines loose, be sure to clean this area. Take you some starting fluid, some brake cleaner, spray it down real good. Make sure there's no grit or dirt because you don't want no grit or anything getting into your hydraulic system. That makes for a bad day. So once you do that, then you put your, your new valve on there and put your line back on. Of course, you have to unhook it from the metal line that's down, down underneath. Then when you do that, let me see if I can get it. Yeah, there it is. There's a new black line. And there's a metal line that goes down the frame rail. I used a uh, 9 16 open end and a half inch open end. I used a half inch to hold the center nut so it wouldn't twist or bend the line while I broke loose the 9 16 nut that's there on the very uh, left hand side. Another thing I had to do, I had to slightly bend it out just a, just a little bit so it would clear the radiator. I just bent it out just a quarter inch or so so that new black line would roll around here nice and smooth. And then I uh, brought it up here, I had to drill two holes, um, just a quarter inch, two, two quarter inch holes, but the way my RV is set up, it made it real easy. I just you know took the drill straight in there and, and drilled it, worked out real well. Um, I haven't mounted my box yet. I'm going to, because of these electrical connections, I, got, I found me a spot down underneath where you can't see, but I'm going to turn it around because I always want my connections to be hanging down. You, I don't want, you never want something like this upside down or anything where water can get in there and stay. So I'm going to get it mounted up underneath there in a good spot so uh, keep any moisture out of it, keep everything, everything dry. Uh, but all in all, it was a good project just a couple hours no big deal uh just gotta, gotta clean up my wires um you can i was gonna talk about the connections here of course this connection here this this comes off the original ecu the original ecu is not even used no more what's mounted underneath this pump this little box from workhorse so it's no longer in play whatsoever that's what this big connector is and originally it had it going down in behind the, the box up underneath. So I, when I unplugged it, I pulled it up so I had, you know, plenty of room to play with it and move my box where I wanted it to. And it's only, you know, you can't go wrong. You know, we got a couple connectors here. And the, the, the wires match up. Connect your electric motor. You, you connect your, your hydraulic switch. You got your connection here to your, uh, your, your proportion valve and also to the ultra stop safety valve. I guess that's what it's called and one-way valve check valve but i think it's if you got a w24 chassis i don't know if the j72s are used on the smaller chassis i don't guess it would be i think it's the weight factor is the reason why we have have to use this uh setup is because for the larger chassis but i know there's not a whole lot of information that i've seen about the j72 so i've just and i'll just learn this from what i've read and tinkered around with on the internet so hopefully this will be of some help but if you uh, plan on putting a lot of miles on your RV you might want to invest in one of these I don't know how often it would happen where it could leave you stranded in the middle of the road but uh, it wouldn't make for a very good day I'm sure so it's a good insurance policy so you can check out um, there it is RazzlesRV.com and pick up one of these devices they did a great job in, in, in designing this and I think it's a great idea. You have a good day. Hope this helps somebody. See you. Bye.